Welcome to the first example video for chapter 10. Chapter 10 has a lot of different topics that all involve rotation and is kind of a summary of all the different types of physics that we've seen in this course. These first couple of examples are going to be what's called rotational kinematics and they should look very similar to chapter two or three problems, but now with rotation ideas. So if we think back to those initial chapters, we had a problem solving process that worked quite well for us that we're going to apply here also. So the first thing we do is we draw a picture. The nice thing in chapter 10 is usually the picture just kind of involves a circle and then any of the vectors, the arrows that we want to use for our circle. So we have a turntable, so something that plays records, and it's circling at 45 revolutions per minute. All right, right away, we know that it's circling. And so our picture is our step one. Our step two is making a list of the given information. The initial angular velocity is 45 revolutions per minute. As we started to practice back in chapter six, as soon as we see these revolution per minute units, we want to make sure we remember that omega, the angular velocity, should be in radians per second. So one revolution is two pi radians. And minute on the bottom means one minute on top divided by 60 seconds. So we complete that, we put it into our calculator, we get 4.71 radians per second for our initial angular velocity. All right, we turn off our record player and it stops after 28 seconds of slowing down. All right, so slowing down, just the arrow should point in the opposite direction. If you started with a clockwise arrow, you'll draw a counterclockwise arrow. And we have two additional pieces of information. The final angular velocity is zero radians per second because we're told the word stops. And the time, the elapsed time that that process took is 28 seconds. This here, this whole process that we've put on the page so far, that's all really useful and important setup that we should not ever be skipping. All right, so part A is asking us to find the angular acceleration. We know back from chapter two that when we're asked to find the acceleration, it's a little bit tougher, but if we look here, this is actually gonna be using the definition of angular acceleration. Making this really simple list of what we have will help ensure that we actually recognize that we have everything we need in order to use this equation. We cannot use equations that have too many unknowns, and the list helps us make sure that we're using the right kind of equation. The final omega is zero, the initial is 4.71, and the time elapsed is 28 seconds. We get negative 0 0.168 radians per second squared. Now, we don't really have a lot of intuition for what a big or small angular acceleration should look like. That's not really what we need to check at the end with our step six, does this make sense? But the negative sign should make sense to us because we're slowing down and these two arrows have to point in opposite senses from each other. If we had an initial positive number for angular velocity, then we need a negative number for angular acceleration to indicate slowing down. For part B, we can rephrase this question the way that we did all throughout chapter two and three. Find something when something else is true. We're told to find the angle, so that's gonna be theta, the angular distance. And we actually have two options here. So these are both available because we have a lot of information about the end of the situation. We could use that the final um, angular velocity is zero radians per second. If we use that, we would have to use the omega theta equation. It looks like the VX equation. 
and that would be fine, but there would be several algebra steps to get theta by itself. However, we can also use that t equals 28 seconds by the time we've stopped, and that means we'll use the theta t equation. It looks very similar to the x t equation, and theta will already be on the left side of that equation by itself. So we're going to use that second one just because we've kind of identified that it's a little bit easier. So the theta t equation. When we write that down, which is our step four of our standard problem solving process, we want to note something else kind of important here that we got very, very used to back in chapter two that trips up a lot of students for some reason because it, maybe it didn't quite click back in chapter two. If we want the total angle change, then we can set the initial angle location to be zero radians. That's not a problem. That's like setting our initial x position to be zero, which we did all the time back in chapter two and in chapter three. All right, so the theta value that we're looking for is zero plus, we use our omega initial from up top, 4.71 times 28 plus one half. Our alpha here, the angular acceleration, is negative 0 0.168. And our time here is 28. And we square that. Don't forget to square that. We can plug all that into our calculator to get our final number answer of 65.9 radians. Or 66 radians, also good. All right, so that's it for this first example. I know that the Greek alphabet can look a little more daunting than X, V, and A. And the units that we're not as used to, radians, radians per second, and radians per second squared, can look a little scarier than meters, meters per second, and meters per second squared. But I really do want us to recognize that these problems from the first portion of chapter 10, the rotational kinematics problems, they are incredibly similar to what we have already been working with and thinking about since chapter two. And we wanna make sure that we don't kind of psych ourselves out by thinking that it's new and different in a way that it really isn't. So I will see you in more examples, some with rotational kinematics, some with other new chapter 10 topics. And thanks for listening.